And everybody said, yeah. I welcome everyone to our Bible study tonight. Yeah. It's study night, power night, yeah. solution night, yeah. yoke breaking night. Yeah. Something will happen in your life. What are you? It's coming your way. Father, we thank you tonight for the Bible study. We thank you for what you have done already as we have listened to the Bible reading, listening to all the prayers and our choir and everything. Lord, we pray the name of Jesus will be mighty in every life tonight in Jesus' name. Nothing impossible in that name. No solution will miss us in that name. I pray you send your power forth with your word tonight in Jesus' name. Move every mountain. Destroy the works of the devil. Set your people free. Let there be joy in the house tonight in Jesus' name. Confirm your word. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. God bless you. You can see that we're coming to Mark chapter 7. In Mark chapter 7 tonight, we're reading and studying from verse 24 all through to verse 37. Let me select some of the verses for you to understand what we're looking at today. From verse 24, it says, And from this he arose, and he went into the borders of Tyre and Sidon, and entered into an house, and would have no man know it, but he could not be hid. For a certain woman, whose young daughter, had an unclean spirit, had of him, and came and fell at his feet. She brought her problem, the problem of the house, the problem of the home, the problem of the daughter unto Christ. Look at the final result in verse 30. In verse 30, and when he was come to a house, he found the devil come out and a daughter laid upon the bed. Peace had come. Amen. Deliverance came. Amen. And calmness came to that daughter. Like the calmness is coming to your house tonight. Amen. And then we're told what happened after that, that he went in verse 31, again departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee. And we're told through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was dead and had an impediment in his speech. And they beseech him to put a hand upon him. They asked for a favor, and they demanded that Christ will touch the child and heal the child. He never said no to any request like that. He will not say no to you. He will not say no to your family. He will not say no to your neighbors. Look at the final result, verse 37. In verse 37, and they were beyond measure astonished. And they said, He had done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. That final testimony is the testimony we have concerning Jesus Christ. And any time you come in encounter with the Lord Jesus Christ, if you really connect with him, that's the final thing you are going to find in your heart, and in your spirit, and in your life, in your behavior, in your character, in your profession, in anything that concerns you, you will have to testify when that thing happens, like it's happening tonight. He has done all things well. Say that with me. He has done all things well. That was the testimony. Despite the opposition of devils and men, in the face of religious and rigid 
tradition. The testimony still was, in spite of all those things, he has done all things well. Confronted with unbelief and ignorance of unbelieving men and sinners, all the same, he has done all things well. Among the impotent, among the incurable, when he touched them, when he had contact with them, the testimony came out, he has done all things well. Over the turbulence of the waves of the sea, of the storm, and the roaring of the sea, at the end of it all, once Christ comes in and he manifests his power, the testimony is over the storm, over the waves, he has done all things well. If in your family there is any turbulence, in your family there is any harassment of the enemy, if in your family tonight there is any storm or any waves, by the time we finish tonight, what's your testimony? He has done all things well. The Father testified about His only begotten Son. The Holy Ghost affirmed about the very Son of God. The same thing in everything He did, in all the places He went, in all the families He touched, in all the people He saved. He has done all things well. The sick rejoiced. And their friends and neighbors rejoiced and confirmed with them. And why were they rejoicing? Because he has done all things well. The disciples observed, even the Pharisees and Caiaphas, and they all whispered, he has done all things well. All through past generations, until this generation, the testimony is still the same. Because Christ has not changed, the testimony has not changed. What's the testimony today? He has done all things well. All who have had any real encounter with him upon testifying and upon touching him and he touching them, the thing was uniform with everybody. He has done all things well. As you connect with the Lord tonight, as you reconcile with the Almighty God tonight, as you look at the scriptures tonight, as you hold on to the promises of God tonight, and as you say everything Christ has provided, everything Christ has done is for who? For me. And you know that is for you. And you plug into that, at the end, something will come out of your mouth. He has done all things well. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the unchangeable Christ. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the same yesterday, today, and forever. We're talking about Jesus tonight, the one that saves, and the one that heals, and the one that delivers, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. That's what we're looking at tonight, the unchangeable Christ, still doing all things well. And tonight, is still active and alive. The risen Christ, the mighty Christ, the omnipotent Christ, and the omnipresent Christ that is with you right there. That thing that you call incurable will be cured tonight. That thing you call impossible will be possible tonight. And it will wipe away your tears. He will break every yoke. He will do all things well. I, I, can, I can almost see you tonight after a Bible study, song in your mouth. Joy in your heart. And everything that is gloomy and dark, everything is taken away in Jesus' name. And as I follow you to your house and you enter your house like this, you announce to the people you meet at home, He has done all things well. The Lord confirm it in your life in Jesus' name. The unchangeable Christ still doing all things well. Three things we're looking at in the study tonight. Number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. The first person that came to Christ, 
She came knowing I will not go back empty handed. She came knowing I'm going to get something from Christ tonight. She came knowing that her great faith will not be disappointed. Point number one, the perseverance of a gentile with great faith. Point number two, the promise of God and its fulfillment. What God had promised, what God had provided, and what God had pronounced, and he had said, this is what I will do. As we look at the second part of the story, the fulfillment came. No disappointment in your life? Yeah. Expectation in your life? fulfillment in your life in Jesus name the promise of God and its fulfillment now point number three the perception of his greatness and finality the perception of the people that came to Christ of the people that touched Christ of the people that connected with Christ they perceived his greatness Nothing was impossible for him. They perceived his greatness. He did everything well. And he became the final authority in their lives. All the people that tried to help them, they had tried and failed. The physicians had failed. And the helpers had failed. And when they came to him as the final authority, he put a finality and a final stop to every problem of their lives finality tonight yeah. I said finality tonight yeah. you don't have to go on in your life crying and you don't have to go on in your life as if you are an unfortunate person Christ is there and whenever we come to Christ he brings a finality yeah. the perception of his greatness and the finality let's come back to point number one is the perseverance of a gentile with great faith i'm coming back to mark chapter 7 mark chapter 7 i'm reading from verse 25 for a certain woman whose young daughter had an unclean spirit had of him and came and fell at his feet the woman was a greek that's a gentile a Syrophoenician by nation, and she besought him that he would cast forth the devil out of her daughter. I want you to understand the daughter was not there. The Lord does not need a physical contact before that blessing can pass on to you. Even at a distance, even while you are far away watching, where you are watching now, as the word comes forth and the name of Christ comes forth, you are delivered in Jesus' name. And so she came alone. She didn't bring the child. Maybe the child was too violent or so troubled and traumatic so that she could not bring that girl. But all the same power will touch her where she is. But Jesus said unto her, Let the children first be filled, for it is not me to take the children's bread and cast it to dogs. Understand what Jesus was saying? He said, The children of Israel, they were the children of the kingdom, and the promises and the provision belonged unto them. The Gentiles were like dogs, and it was not right to give the children's bread unto dogs what jesus said was true all i've seen and come short of the glory of god but the gentiles have seen further and they have made themselves dogs unclean unacceptable in the sight of the almighty god and so jesus told the truth and the woman understood the truth and the woman did not say do you mean i'm a dog do you mean i'm not acceptable do you mean I'm a rejected Gentile? Okay, if that's the way uh, Jesus feels and he's accommodating all the ideas of the Jewish people. Bye-bye. I don't have anything to do with you. That woman was wise. You'll be a wise woman. You'll be a wise man. And what you have come for, if you are wise and you keep staying, you will get. Look at, look at verse 28. And she answered and said, Yes, Lord. Don't ever contradict the Lord, whatever he says. It says you are a sinner. Yes, Lord. It says you are unclean. Yes, Lord. 
It says you are not qualified by yourself to enter the kingdom of God. Yes, Lord. It says you are powerless. It says you are impotent. And it says all your righteousness is as filthy rags. Don't argue. Yes, Lord. Somebody there say, Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. She said, Yes, Lord. But she didn't stop there yet. The dogs under the table each of the children's crumbs wonderful that's wisdom the lord will give you wisdom the wisdom to pray the wisdom to ask the lord and the wisdom to demand what you need and it will be given unto you look at verse 29 and he said unto her for this saying for this saying go thy way the devil is gone out of thy daughter. For that sin, for the proper prayer, and for the proper answer, that devil is gone from the daughter. And then it says in verse 30, And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out. That's what you'll find. I said that's what you'll find. And her daughter laid upon the bed. Let me read a full account to you in Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but Matthew writes with some details. You know, Matthew was a tax collector and he used to keep records and he wrote everything and has given us the details here. As I look at the detail, I'm going to divide this into very subtitles. Number one, the prayer for great favor. The prayer for great favor. What the woman came for was not a small thing. It was something that no physician in South Phoenicia, in her own gentile community, could do for her. It was a great favor. It was something that not even a Jewish priest could do for her a great favor. Just one person in the whole of the land and his name is jesus his name is savior his name is redeemer his name is deliverer just that one person could do this for her the prayer for great favor there's a second part to this number two her perseverance with great fervency she didn't allow her fervency to cool down a faith to cool down, a prayer to cool down, a request to cool down, a perseverance with great fervency, and then the power of great faith. The power of great faith. Faith will never fail. And if you have faith in Christ tonight, I shouldn't say if, I should say since you have faith in Christ tonight, all things are possible. Look at the first part here. I'm reading from chapter 15 of Matthew, verse 22. The prayer, the plea for great favor. Look at verse 22 here. And, and behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with a devil. And he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she cries after us. You know, some people are easily discouraged. Some people are easily annoyed. And they feel, what kind of insult is this? I came all the way from the coast of Sidon, and I'm pleading, thou son of David, I'm not asking you, Peter, I'm not asking you, John, I'm not asking you, James, I'm asking the Lord, and it's the Lord for all, it's Lord for everyone, he's the son of God, and the son of David, and he is not only for the Jews, it's for the Gentiles, even the Old Testament said so, and I'm asking the Lord, and you are telling the Lord to send me away. All right, if that's your attitude, take your Jesus and monopolize him. Take your Jesus and do anything you want to do with him. Bye-bye, I'm going. Some people, they wear their temper on their sleeves. And they're easily annoyed 
But this woman said, no, I came for something. I'm going to get what I came for. I came for something tonight, somebody there. And I'm going to get what I came for. And whatever the attitude of the people around, whatever the attitude of the people who are close to the Lord Jesus Christ in the physical, it's not going to discourage you. It's not going to put you off. You will receive. Yeah. Somebody there said, you will receive. Yeah. And then look at verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not saint, but unto the house of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. That woman heard that. But he that said she did not hear. Verse 25. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord. He still called him Lord. He said, you are Lord. He said, you are master. Whatever you are saying, you are saying out of your divinity, out of your sovereign. I accept that completely. And then she said, Lord, help me. He will help you tonight. Yeah. And he answered and said, it is not me. It is not right. Even if I wanted to do it, how can I do it? It is not right to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. Uh, that's a test of our faith. You will pass the test. You will not go back home empty handed. You will not say, I'm annoyed. You not say, I'm angry. You not say, I'm disappointed. So that's the way they are. All those disciples near Christ, even Christ himself, look at what he's telling me, the prayer for great favor. As you come and you say, Lord, I will not be left out, you will not be left out. Yeah. You will answer your prayer. Yeah. All right, you will answer my prayer. Yeah. Hey, look, at, look at Matthew chapter 17. And we're reading from verse 15. In verse 15, Lord, have mercy on my son, for he is lunatic and so vexed, and oft times he falls into the fire and oft into the water. And I brought him to thy disciples, and they could not cure him. Here is another case of a man pleading of a man praying, of a man asking. The, the Lord Jesus had gone to the Mount of Transfiguration and he went with Peter, James, and John. And the rest of the disciples, nine of them remaining, they were there. And the man brought his son unto them. And he said, don't you have power? Have you not received? Has he not delegated his authority and power unto you? All right. Here is my boy. Here is my only son. Help me and cast the devil out. And they could not. And the man did not say, okay, I'm going home. Maybe it's not the will of God. Maybe this is my destiny. Maybe this is what God wants for me. God does not want evil for you. If nine disciples, if nine apostles have tried and the problem is not solved, wait, don't go. A solution is coming your way. Yeah. Hey, look at verse 17. Then Jesus answered and said, O faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him hither unto me. The solution is coming nearer. And Jesus rebuked the devil, and he departed out of him, and the child was killed from that very hour. The child was killed from that very hour. He will repeat that in your life today. The second thing I want to point out here, in the case of this woman, is her perseverance with great fervency. Her perseverance with great fervency. Let's come back to that Matthew chapter 15. The same story, but it's telling us some details, giving us some details here. Matthew chapter 15, I'm reading from verse 24. In verse 24, and he answered and said, I am not saint, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she, after Jesus had said that, 
You see, there are some people, they're looking for the promises of God. Maybe I get this promise that will solve my problem. I get that promise that will solve my problem. The problem of sin in somebody's life. The problem of sickness in somebody's life. And the problem of evil spirit in somebody's life. And the problem of suffering in somebody's life. The problem of society heaping a lot of things on you. I'm looking for a promise and you cannot find a promise. And you ransack and you search all through the Bible. And you cannot point your finger on this, the promise that addresses my problem. Look at this woman. The woman did not have any promise that she can lay hold on to. And Jesus said, you don't have your promise. You don't have your provision. What can I do for you? I'm saying only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. And all the same she came. Such people will never be disappointed. The people who know that God created them and because he's my creator, he must solve my problem. He mustn't create me for nothing. He mustn't create me for suffering. And the people that know that Jesus Christ died on the cross of Calvary and he died for my sin and he died to take the consequence of sin away. There must be solution to my problem. Solution to the problem your family. Solution to the problem your personal life. Solution to the problem anywhere you find yourself. You may not be able to point at any particular promise, but all the same, if God is God, he will help you. If Jesus is the very son of God, he will help you. And so she came and she worshipped him and said, Lord, help me. But he answered and said, it is not meat, it is not right, it is not proper to take the children's bread and cast it to the dogs. And she said, truth Lord, I will never accuse the Lord of saying something wrong. Everything you say, my Lord, is true. Everything you say, my Lord, is factual. There are people that call Jesus Lord. And then they get angry at him. God, what are you looking at? Jesus, what are you looking at? Why have you done this? Why have you not done this? Why is this happening? Why is this happening? And they accuse the Lord. They almost get to the border of blasphemy. And they say, hey, Jesus is Lord and Jesus is Savior. But I cannot understand why this happened and why this happened and why that happened. And they accuse the Lord of being unfaithful and being unfair. How could this happen to me? I serve you. I came from my place and I come to you and I'm pleading would you do this and you are calling me dog? That cannot be true. You don't know my life. You don't know me. If you knew me, you will not say that. Stop all that argument. Jesus knows more about you than you know about yourself. Give me a good amen. amen. And the woman said, you are Lord and you are truthful. If you can say in your life anything happening, the rain falling, the storm roaring, and the mountains moving, and all in-laws are saying this and saying that, every accusation is coming to you, and they're saying, ah, she goes to deeper life. He goes to deeper life. But she, look at this and look at this. She is not, she is not clean. She is not all right. And then you go to Jesus and say, Jesus, why? You see Jesus making them to talk to you like that? No. So you just go to Jesus and worship him and say, Jesus, whatever they say, whatever they do, however they act, however they react, Jesus, you are my Lord. Somebody there, Jesus, you are my Lord. And Jesus, you are always truthful. You are not far from your miracle. Yeah. And so now, point in the, the third one here is the power of great faith. The power of great faith. The faith that will not let go. The faith that will not give up. The faith that will not say, okay, maybe I don't have the luck today. Maybe I don't have the breakthrough today. I'm going back home. You will not go back empty handed. Yeah. Did it you come for something? Get what you came for before you go. Don't go. Don't go. Remain until that thing from heaven drops upon your life 
and it is coming your way. And look at it from verse 28 now. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. What even some Pharisees didn't get, she got. What some Sadducees didn't get, she got. What some Jewish people, that they, they had the bread of the children, what they didn't have, she got it. What other people have not got before you, you will get. Yeah. O woman, O man, O boy, O girl, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. This is your hour. This is your time. The Lord will not disappoint you. Ephesians, Ephesians chapter 3, Ephesians chapter 3. Look at the ability of the Lord and look at the strength of the Lord and look at the power of the Lord. That thing that looks impossible has now become possible. Amen. Ephesians chapter 3 verse 20. Now unto him that is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power that worketh where? That worketh in you, in us. It will happen. Ephesians chapter 6, I'm reading from verse 16. Ephesians chapter 6, verse 16. Above all, taking the shield of faith, wherewith ye shall be able to quench all the fiery darts of the wicked. All the fiery darts of the wicked. How many fiery darts of the wicked are you going to quench? All. You are going to be free. I see free people in front of me today. Free and free indeed in Jesus' name. Let, let, let's come back now. Let's come back to Mark chapter 7. We're coming to point number 2. The promise of God and its fulfillment. I'm reading from Mark chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 31. Mark chapter 7. We're reading from verse 31. Look at this. And again, departing from the coast of Tyre and Sidon. He came unto the sea of Galilee through the midst of the coast of Decapolis. And they bring unto him one that was deaf, 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 and had an impediment in her speech. And they beseech him, they pleaded with him, they begged him, they prayed him to put his hand on him. And he took him aside from the multitude and put his fingers into his ears and his speech and touched his tongue and looking up to heaven he sighed and said unto him a father that is be opened and straightway that means immediately that means instantaneously that means that ve at that very time what is the touch of the Lord in your life? <laughs> straightway, straightway now, immediately. It says straightway, his ears were opened. And the string of his tongue was loosed. And he spake plainly. And he spake plainly. You will speak plainly. Yeah. Why did he know that he should bring a person like this unto Christ? What are they looking for? What motivated them? What engineered them? What prompted them? That a person had an impediment in the speech. A person could not hear. He was deaf. And then they brought him to Jesus. Why? Number one, the promise of the Almighty. The promise of the Almighty. And then number two, the possibilities of his authority. The possibilities of his authority. They had heard what he had done in other places. They said, if he did that there, he can do this here. If that happened in that other place, at that other shore, this one will happen here. If what we have heard that he did in Jerusalem, 
in Cana of Galilee, in Capernaum, and in Nazareth, all those places, those things he did there, he has the same authority and the same power, he will do it here. Number one, the promise of the Almighty. Number two, the possibilities in his authority. Number three, the publicity after their astonishment. The publicity after their astonishment. Number one, what promise were they standing on? What promise were they relying on? Look at Isaiah chapter 35. Isaiah chapter 35. It's good to study your Bible. And it's good to know the promises of God so that whenever a problem arises in your life, arises in your family, arises in your Christian life, you'll be able to say, according to the promise of the Almighty, I know that this problem will be solved. My problems are solved. Isaiah chapter 35, and I'm reading from verse, I'm reading from verse 4. Look at verse 4 here. Say to them, that of a fearful heart be strong, fear not. Behold, your God will come with vengeance. Amen. Even God with the recompense, he will come and save you. Amen. You see, you must know the promise of God that if you fell into a dungeon, if you fell into a pit, if you fell into sin, if you fell into evil, if you fell into shame, you must know the promise of God, it will come and save you. If you fall sick, you fall into sickness, you must know the promise of God, he will come and save you. If you fall into poverty and penury, you must understand there's a promise of God, he will come and save you. Now look at verse 5, look at verse 5. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened. Look at that. Look at the promise. This promise was stuck away there and those people didn't heal. Because of the promise of the Almighty, Christ is here. It's the fulfillment of that promise. Let's take uh, this person to him. The eyes of the blind shall be opened and the ears of the deaf shall be unstopped. That's why they came. That's why they came. They knew the promise was there. And because of that promise, that's why they came. The promise of the Almighty. We're looking at Isaiah chapter 29. Isaiah chapter 29. And I'm reading from verse 14. Isaiah chapter 29, verse 14. Therefore, behold, I will proceed to do a marvelous work among these people. Even a marvelous walk and a wonder, for the wisdom of the wise men shall perish, and the understanding of their prudent men shall be healed. Look at verse 18. In verse 18, in that day when I do the wonder, in that day when I bring the wonder walker, the miracle walker, in that day when I send my only begotten son, in that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. You see, you must know the promise of God. They knew the promise of the Almighty. That's why when Christ came, they said, He has come. The fulfillment of the promise has come. And this is our day. In that day shall the deaf hear the words of the book. And the eyes of the blind shall see out of obscurity. Out of darkness. That's all the amen you can give. Hey, look at look at this, look at this. I see chapter 32. I see chapter 32. I'm reading from verse 3 and verse 4. And the eyes of them that see shall not be dim. And the ears of them that hear shall akin. The heart also of the rash shall understand knowledge. And the tongue of the stammerers, that man they brought had impediment in his speech. And here is a promise that have been waiting to be claimed. There are many promises of the word of God waiting to be claimed. You are going to claim them tonight. And he said, the tongue of the stammerers shall be ready to speak plainly. Ready to speak plainly. The promise is going to be fulfilled in Jesus' name. And now we come to the possibilities of his authority. The possibilities of his 
authority. We're coming back to Mark, and we're reading this time, Mark chapter 2. Mark chapter 2. And I'm reading from verse, uh, reading from verse 12. Mark chapter 2, we're looking at verse 12. And immediately, he arose. Immediately. Somebody help me shout that word immediately. Yeah. When is your miracle tonight? Yeah. When is the touch of the Lord upon your life? Yeah. When will all that painful thing be rolled out of your life? Immediately he arose and he took up his bed and went forth before them all in so much that they were amazed and they glorified God saying, we never saw it on this fashion. We never saw it on this fashion. Luke chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 36. In Luke chapter 4, reading from verse 36, and they were all amazed and spake among themselves, saying, What a word is this? For with authority and power, he commanded the unclean spirits. What happened? And they come out. And they come out to be done tonight. Yeah. His creator in the beginning was the word. And the word was with God, and the word was God. And the word came and he dwelt among us, and we beheld this glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and full of truth. And he'll manifest that truth and grace tonight in every life. Yeah. Hey, look at Psalm 33. In Psalm 33, I'm reading from verse 9. Psalm 33, we're reading from verse 9. For he speak, and it was done. He speaks, and it will be done. He commanded, and it stood fast. He commanded, unclean spirit, they came out. They couldn't argue. They couldn't say, no, we're not coming out. No, we're too strong here. I know we've been here for a long time. Every evil spirit will come out. Yeah. Number one, the promise of the Almighty. Number two, the possibilities of his authority. Number three, the publicity after their astonishment. Let's come back to Mark chapter 7. Mark chapter 7. They were astonished. They were surprised. They were amazed. And it says, look at chapter 7, reading from verse 36. And he charged them that they should tell no man. But the more he charged them, so much the more, a great deal, they published it. They were so astonished, they couldn't hold back. They were so astonished, they couldn't stop talking about it. You'll be so astonished, you'll not be able to stop talking about it. <laughs> Luke chapter 8. In Luke chapter 8, look at this, in verse 39. Luke chapter 8, verse 39. Return to thine own house and show how great things God has done unto thee. And he went his way and published throughout the whole city. How great things Jesus had done unto him. There are some people that say, I don't know how to do publicity. I don't know how to tell other people, you know, when something good has happened to you. Uh, you know, you've gone to school and then you didn't know you will make it uh, so high like this. All of a sudden, the result came out and they said, you were number one. And they said, you are first class. You see me, somebody told you that. And then you went to the notice board yourself and you saw your name and you saw it written against your name. First class boy, first class girl, first class man, woman. And then you came out of that and you are smiling or are you frowning? And then the first friend you met and he said, something happened, I can see it on your face. 
Do you close your mouth? No. What do you say? I made it. I got it. You mean you pass? No, don't tell me that, that I just pass. I pass with flying colors. I made first class. You are going to make first class. In faith, first class. In miracle, first class. In moving your mountain, first class. And in the blessings the Lord is going to give unto you, first class miracle. First class blessing. And first class breakthrough in your life in Jesus' name. And when that has happened, you will not say, I don't know how to talk about it. You will talk. You will publicize. And you will do it with joy. You will do it with excitement. Look at verse 40 of that passage. And it came to pass that when Jesus was returned, the people gladly received him. For they were all waiting for him. We will talk about Christ. Amen. We'll talk about the gospel. Let's come back to Mark. I'm reading from chapter 13, verse 10. Mark, chapter 13, verse 10. It says, And the gospel must first be published among all nations. If that gospel has come to your life and has saved you, publish it, publicize it. If that gospel has come to you and you are healed, publicize it. If that gospel has come to you and you are saved and sanctified, publicize it. If that gospel has come to your family and it has changed your family and turned your family around, publicize it. The gospel of the kingdom must be published, and then it says, among all nations, you'll be part of this. You will talk. Amen. You'll not be talking what people are talking on the street. You know, this is bad. Economy is bad. Politics is bad. Everything is down. We have good news. Amen. We have the gospel. Amen. Jesus is still alive. Amen. And he's able to change and turn everything around. Amen. Don't publicize bad news. Publicize what kind of news? good news and people's lives will be transformed and changed around you in Jesus name point number three now we're coming to Mark chapter 7 Mark chapter 7 I'm reading verses 30 and 37 it's a conclusion of the first part of the record and a conclusion of the second part of the record I'm coming to Mark Chapter 7, verse 13. And when she was come to her house, she found the devil gone out, and her daughter laid upon the bed. Verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. He maketh both the deaf to hear and the dumb to speak. Point number three, the perception of his greatness and finality. They searched in all the history and they looked at the people that were in the Old Covenant, Old Testament, and they said, we never saw any prophet, any priest, any king, any preacher, any shepherd like this before. This is unique. And he is universal. And he is helping and blessing everyone. And no matter the challenge, and no matter the predicament, is able to solve every problem. That's why it says they were surprised. And they were astonished beyond measure. And they said, he has done all things well. His greatness and his finality. Can I just show you how they saw how great he was? We're looking at Matthew chapter 12. His greatness. Matthew chapter 12. We're reading from verse 41. 
Jesus is great. Greater than anyone that ever lived on earth. Greater than anyone that is living on earth now. Greater than anyone that will ever live on earth. It's incomparable. You cannot compare him with any prophet. You cannot compare him with any religious leader. You cannot compare him with any priest. He's great beyond the greatest of all men. Look at Matthew chapter 12. Matthew chapter 12, I'm reading from verse 41. The men of Nineveh shall rise in judgment with this generation and shall condemn it because they, the men of Nineveh, repented at the preaching of Jonas and behold, a greater than Jonas is here. A greater than the Old Testament prophets is here a greater than contemporary prophets is here a greater than jonas is here and the queen of the south shall rise up in the judgment of this generation and shall condemn it for she came from the uttermost parts of the earth uh, to hear the wisdom of solomon and behold somebody there tell me a greater than Solomon is here. You think about all the kings, no king in the Old Testament was as rich as Solomon, was as wise as Solomon, and yet in his greatness, he wasn't up to the level in any way of the Lord Jesus Christ, a greater than Solomon is here. They recognized and they appreciated and they publicized the greatness of the Lord Jesus Christ. We're looking at Luke chapter 7. Luke chapter 7. And I'm reading from verse 12. Luke chapter 7. We're reading from verse 12. The perception of his greatness and the perception of his finality. Look at this. Look at this. In Luke chapter 7. Reading from verse 12. Now, when he came near the gate of the city, behold, there was a dead man carried out, the only son of his mother, and she was a widow. And much people of the city was with her. And when the Lord saw her, he had compassion on her. His compassion is on you tonight. Yeah. And said unto her, weep not. Weep not tonight. The problems are over. Yeah. And he came and touched the bear, the coffin. And they that bear him stood still. And he said, young man, I say unto thee, tell me. Arise. And he that was dead sat up. And began to speak. And delivered him to his mother. Look at verse 16. And there came a fear on all. And they glorified God saying. What did they say? A great prophet is risen up among us. And that God has visited his people. He showed everybody that he was greater than anyone that had ever been before him, the greatest of all, the perception of his greatness and finality. Look at John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I read from verse 53. John chapter 8, verse 53. Are thou greater than our father Abraham, which is dead, and the prophets? are dead who makest thou thyself you see when people say they believe on the lord jesus christ and they don't know the greatness of christ the greatness of jesus christ they are kind of uh, moving between christ and one old man in the village between christ and one 
um, whoever in the community and they are saying that Christ is there the man is there on Sunday they go to Christ and then during the week all the six days they go to all those men and all those women that they think will solve their problem they do not know the greatness of Christ once you know the greatness of Christ it is Christ and Christ alone it is Christ and Christ alone Jesus and Jesus only is the king of kings and the lord of laws and there is no one you can compare with him these people were asking art thou greater than our father abraham look at the answer in verse 58 verse 58 jesus said unto them verily verily i say unto you before abraham was i am is the i am that i am is the omnipotent one it's the one that had been from all eternity. And then he came to this world and has gone back to heaven. Before Abraham was, I am. It's great. My Jesus is great. It's greater than all men, all women, all religious people, anywhere and everywhere. There's no name under the sun as great as his name. There's no priest under the sun as great as the priesthood of the Lord Jesus Christ. He is all I need. He is all I want. He is all I will have. He is great. He will save. He will heal. He will deliver. He will set free. The greatest of all. God has given him a name above every name. Look at uh, Hebrews chapter 4. And I'm reading from verse 14. Hebrews chapter 4. I'm reading from verse 14. Seeing then that we have a great high priest that is passed into the heavens. Jesus, the Son of God, let us all fast our profession is the great high priest and we can hold fast to our profession he will not disappoint us in jesus name Amen. hebrews chapter 13 the greatness of jesus hebrews chapter 13 reading from verse 20 now the god of peace that brought again from the dead our lord jesus christ that great shepherd of the sheep the great shepherd of the sheep through the blood of the everlasting covenant make you perfect in every good work to do his will walking in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through jesus christ to whom be glory forever and ever Amen. Let's come back to Mark. Mark, I'm reading chapter 7, and I'm reading from verse 37. And they were beyond measure astonished, saying, He has done all things well. How could they say that? They looked at everything Jesus meant, everything Jesus did. And this particular thing he had done here. And they couldn't resist that testimony. And he said, he has done all things well. Number one, he has killed the most incurable. He has killed the most incurable. There was this woman that had an issue of blood, 12 years. And she had spent all she had upon physician. And she had not been killed. And she said, if I may but touch the hem of his garment, I shall be made whole. And she came in faith and touched. Twelve years of problem vanished away. Because he killed the most incurable. That's why they said, it's done all things well. Number two, he saved the vilest of sinners. And he's able to save tonight. Save the vilest of sinners. Look at the woman. She was so sinful. And she was burdened by the load of her sin. And she was weeping and weeping and weeping. And wiping the tears off the feet of Jesus Christ. And Jesus said, Thy sins which are many are all forgiven. 
your sins which are many are all forgiven forgiveness available tonight it's not like you know all the preachers other people other other founders and he, he is the savior and he came to save us from all our sins number three he cleansed the most defiled and unclean person if you are so unclean and so defiled in your conscience in your mind and you're polluted and even it affects your face, the leper came and he said, I know I'm unclean, and I know I'm defiled. I know I'm the most wretched person in this community and in this nation. If thou wilt, thou canst make me clean. And Jesus said for the sand, and he opened his mouth and said, I will be thou clean. That's what he did. Nobody had ever done that with a single word like that. It will happen tonight. Yeah. Number four, he transformed the most avaricious man among all men. Avaricious, the most greedy. Zacchaeus was greedy, was avaricious, and was covetous. It's like any time he saw people having anything left, he must grab. But then he met Jesus. You meet Jesus tonight, all greed will vanish away. You meet Jesus tonight, so covetousness will vanish away because He is the one able to transform the most avaricious among men. And when He met Jesus and said, Jesus, I've seen you now, covetousness is gone, avarice is gone, greed is gone. Half of my good I give to the poor. And if I've taken anything uh, by wrong accusation, I restore to them fourfold. And Jesus said, This day is salvation come into this house. You will take salvation back home with you, forgiveness back with you, freedom back with you. Number five, he converted the hardest of all men. He converted the hardest of all men. What other people are not able to do? Here is Saul, and he was going from Jerusalem to Damascus, and he said, anybody I find of this way, I will arrest him. I will imprison him. I'm going to wipe out Christ, Christianity, this religion of the way, of the Nazarene. I'm going to wipe it out. And while it was going on the way, the light shone from heaven. The light will shine across your pathway. It was like light of the sun. It fell on the ground. And then the Lord Jesus said, Saul, Saul, he knows your name tonight. He knows your heart tonight. He knows your need tonight. And he knows how he's going to change you tonight because he will change you. He will do what no other person can do. And what you have not been able to do for yourself, he will do it for you in Jesus' name. Saul, Saul, why persecutest thou me? Who art thou, Lord? And he said, I'm Jesus, whom thou persecutest. It is hard for thee to kick against the pricks. That man was instantaneously converted and said, Lord, what will you have me do? And he became a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ. Who can change a hardened person like that? Who can change an injurious person like that? Who can change a kind of sinner that was reaching in a sin like that? Only Jesus. He will do it in your life. What did he say? He has done all things well. Number six, he tamed the most violent of all men. He tamed the most violent of all men. The man is coming from the tomb. And the man is hurting himself. And the man is wanting to kill himself. And he had bound him with chain and with fetters. He broke the chains and all the fetters. And then he saw Jesus and he knelt down. And he worshipped him. And then he said, what have I got to deal with you? And Jesus said, how many of you evil spirits are there controlling this man, driving him, scattering his head, and driving him here and there? And he said, a legion. And he said, go out. In one word, they came out. Tell me how you can remain the same. Tell me how the miracle will not happen in your life. It will happen. Yeah. 
when you meet Jesus Christ, he will tame the most violent of all men. Maybe you say, I, I just cannot help it. Once something happens at home, I get irritated. Whatever I get in my hand, I use it if to smash the wife or to smash uh, my children. I, I don't know. And then when it comes down, my eyes are opened. I'm crying. And I say, why have I done that? You came to the right place tonight. The Lord will change and transform and calm the most violent of all tempers in Jesus' name. They said it's done all things well. Why did they say that? You want the stormy sea and it's chilled and quietened every storm with a word. Peace be still. Everything came to a calm in your life. Whatever storm, whatever turbulence whatever waves, whatever the roaring of the enemy. Tonight, Jesus speaks to your situation. Yeah. Peace be still. Yeah. Number eight, he enlightened the darkest of all hearts. This man was born blind. Had not even seen the light of day until he met Jesus. And Jesus made clay, put on the eyes, go and wash. He obeyed. He came back seeing. Not only that, he saw in the physical. He saw in the spiritual. And when the Pharisees said, give glory to God, we don't know about this man. He said, but why? There is a mystery that you don't know this man. And yet he opened my eyes. And since the world began, the man is enlightened already. Since the world began, we have never heard that anyone opened the eyes of one that was born blind. If this man were not of God, he could not have done this. They said, you were born blind. Are you teaching us? He became a teacher of the rulers in the synagogue and Jesus had enlightened the darkest of hearts. He can do that today. Now whatever ignorance we have in our hearts, he'll take everything away. Ignorance in religion, he'll take it away. Ignorance in worship, he'll take that away. Ignorance in normal things in life, he'll take that away in Jesus' name. He broke the strongest chains of habits. There are people that have their habits binding them like a chain. And they cannot help it. They just do it. And yet, it will break every fetter. It will break every chain. And every bad habit, it will take away from every life tonight. In Jesus' name, he has done all things well. If any man be in Christ as a new creature, old things are passed away. In your life tonight, those old things will pass away. All things will become in my life, in my family, in the work of my hand, in my ministry. All things will become new. Listen to this. This had never happened until Christ came. Somebody was at the brink of hell. He was already dying on the cross. A few hours after this moment, he will drop into hell. And Jesus took somebody at the brink of hell, he took him to heaven and said, today you will be with me in paradise. Nobody had ever done anything like that before. That somebody just about to drop into hell, Jesus took hold of him and said, come, let's go to heaven. Why will you perish? Why will you go to hell? When he says he can take somebody so near hell, as if to drop into hell, he'll take that person, he'll take that person to heaven, 
the Lord will not disappoint you. The Lord made invalids every weak hole. Invalid, impotent, totally sick, totally paralyzed. That the man had been there 30 and 8 years. And Jesus simply asked, will you be made whole? And the man said, I have no man. I have no helper. When the angel comes and troubles the sea to take me there, before I get there, somebody else is there already. And Jesus said, rise up. Take up your bed and walk. 38 years of problem was solved instantaneously. No wonder. The people said they were so surprised and they were so astonished and they said he has done all things well. Look at this. That Jesus wanted to change the whole world and he picked up 12 unlearned ignorant, unqualified men and sent them into the world. And now from that time, the Christian faith and the gospel had circled the whole globe. Only Jesus can do that and take ignorant men and take unlearned men and take unqualified men and send them forth and say, go and change the world and now he's come to us today he's going to take your life and he's going to pick you up and no matter how ignorant you are how unlearned you are the time has come the one that is able to train able to develop and able to take any of us and send us forth into the world to change the world that looks unchangeable it will happen he did it through them, he's going to do it through us. And at last, from tonight, I said at last and from tonight, in your family, your personal life, in all your children, in your local church, in our church, in all our ministries, in everything you represent, in your place of work, and in your community, something will happen that will make everyone that sees you astonished. They'll be surprised about your life. You will not be and you will not remain as you are now. And anybody seeing you after tonight will say from what I can see and from what I behold in your life, he has done all things well. Rise up and claim it. Rise up and claim it. He wants to do it. He can do it. He has not changed. It's the same yesterday, today, and forever. He can do it and he will do it. He has done all things well. He will forgive your sin. He specializes in that. He will take your guilt away. And it will take all the condemnation away. It will take your doubts away. You'll be so surprised. And you'll be so amazed. That immediately. Instantaneously. It will take everything away. And you will know in your conscience. You will know in your heart. He has done all things well. Present all the problems to him. Let him do all things well. Guilt to him. Let him forgive you. The condemnation to him. Let him take all those things away. And the habit that has been there for a long time. Let him break that habit tonight. He can do it. He will do it. He has done all things well. The sorrow in your heart. The doubt in your heart. The unbelief in your heart. Present it to him. And let him do all things well. Let him take away the doubt, the unbelief. Let him take away the powerlessness in your life. Let him take away the impotence in your heart. Let him take away the insufficiency of your own effort. Let him do it. Let him do it. Let him do it. And it will do all things well. 
Tell him to forgive you, he will. Tell him to cleanse you, he will. Tell him to set you free, he will. Tell him to break every yoke in your life, he will. If you have been powerless to break a particular habit, bad habit, evil habit, Jesus is able. Tell him. Tell him. He will. If you have been asking for salvation for such a long time, Lord save me, Lord save me. And you never had assurance. You never had conviction. You never had confidence. He is the savior. He saves. He forgives. He sets free. He washes water than snow. Tonight is your night. Tell him, he'll forgive, he'll set you free. You'll be amazed, you'll be surprised. He has done all things well. He is a sanctifier. He is a purifier. He is the one that takes away that root of sin out of your heart. What can he not do? Don't charge Christ with impossibility. He can. He will. He has the power to break that yoke of sin. He'll set you free. Free. Free indeed. He sanctifies. He purifies. He empowers. You feel weak. He can baptize you in the Holy Ghost. Fill you with the Holy Ghost. Immerse you in the Holy Ghost. Power from on high. You shall receive power. After the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me, both in Jerusalem and Judea, Samaria, to the uttermost part of the earth. He can, he will. Don't label Christ with impossibility. He can heal you. Of incurable disease, he can heal you. Of long-standing sickness, he can heal you. Of hereditary disease, it's been in the family. Happened to so and so, happened to so and so, happened to so and so, and then it's coming your way. He can heal you tonight. You'll be amazed beyond measure, astonished beyond measure, and you will say, He has done all things well. Are you fearful? Are you timid? Some things that happened in your life that you are now afraid of this, afraid of that. Let him break that yoke of fear tonight. And remove that yoke of fear from your life. And give you the spirit of love and power and might. He can, he will. And your testimony will be, he has done all things well. Give him the chance to tame your life. Give him the chance to tame your character. Give him the chance to tame your conduct and to turn your life around. He can, he will. Anything undesirable in your heart, your character, in your conduct. Anything undesirable 
in your relationships, anything undesirable, your private life, open the door tonight. Let Christ come in and do something that astonishes everyone in your community. They look at you and say, He has done all things well. Let him not pass you by tonight. Salvation is a definite Christian experience. Let him do it. Restoration from backsliding. The restoration of the prodigal son, the prodigal daughter is a great work of grace. And you'll so turn your life around. Let him do it. Restoration. Restoration. He pardons every sin. He sets every captive free. Any evil spirit following you about? Any evil spirit driving you? Controlling you? Any evil spirit manipulating your life? Present it to Christ tonight. Tonight is the night of deliverance. Tonight is the night of solution. Solution to every problem. Let him knock that demonic power out of your life. Cast it out. Set you free. Remove the chain in your leg. The chain in your leg. The chain in your hand. The chain around your waist. The devil wanting to use that chain and drag you to perdition. Let tonight be the night of final, total freedom and deliverance. Let him remove impossibility from your life tonight. I want to go there, impossible. I want to do that, impossible. I want to climb that mountain, impossible. I want to achieve that, impossible. Let him make impossibilities possible in your life tonight. If thou canst believe, since you now believe, all things are possible unto him who believes impotence cancelled powerlessness cancelled weakness cancelled falling and rising falling and rising falling and rising cancelled freedom deliverance power divine ability the sufficiency of the name of the Lord in your life tonight tonight is able is able able to save save to the uttermost able to deliver Deliver with a finality. Able. 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 To bring solution to every problem of your life. Able. To take you from the brink of hell and to enter heaven with him. Able. He will. Don't give up. Don't give up. Persevere. 
with great faith persevere for the face that will not be denied the face that will not give up until the heavens opened until there's a solution flowing from the throne of God make sure it's done make sure it's done make sure it's done thank him believe him he cannot fail accept the promise is sure the promise of the almighty the possibilities abide till today the possibilities of his authority the power of great faith the power of great faith he cannot fail he will not fail with him all things are possible In Jesus' name we pray. The Lord has answered my prayer. Say that for yourself. The Lord has answered my prayer. Impossibilities are cancelled. Impotence is taken away. Fear is taken away. Sin is taken away. Failure is taken away. This is the night for you to be astonished. For you to be amazed. For you to testify. He has done all things well. Say that for yourself. Say that for your spirit. Say that for your body. Say that for everything concerning your life. He has done all things well. No more crying. No more doubting. No more complaining. No more murmuring. No more sorrow. No more shame. No more lack of confidence. No more going about and saying, I never got it, I never got it. I have it. I have it. I have it. Be it confirmed in every life in Jesus' name. Who are the partakers tonight? Possessors tonight? Father, in Jesus' name, we thank you tonight for your power. We thank you for your promise. We thank you for your goodness. We thank you for your abiding grace. And we thank you because we're impartial. You are for every one of us. Lord, I pray you will touch every life tonight in Jesus' name. I pray, Lord, every sin confessed, you forgive in Jesus' name. Every backsliding confess, you restore the backslider in Jesus' name. The power to go and sin no more. The power to live victoriously. And the power to live in righteousness. Grant to everyone in Jesus' name. Lord, no sickness can stand before your name. That's the name above every name. Above the name of cancer. Above the name of HIV AIDS. Above the name of blindness. Above the name of deafness. Above every name that is named on earth. 
and therefore I pray in the victory of that name, in the authority of that name, in the power of that name. Sickness, come out in Jesus' name. No evil spirit can stand when we mention that name. When we mention the name of Jesus, hell trembles. Heaven stands at attention. And the believers receive their miracle. And so, every sickness, every evil spirit, I command you, come out in Jesus' name. Lord, your people will not continue to live under the burden and the pressure and the oppression of impossibility. <laughs> impossibility in every life I command become possible in Jesus' name. <laughs> Fill every heart with solution. Every heart with holiness every heart with your purity every life with your power every home with your joy every family with your happiness and lord i pray everything your people have mentioned to you tonight i pray let there be a confirmation it is done your prayers are answered our prayers are answered. Let there be confirmation in your life that now in your life, Christ has done all things well. Confirmation from heaven. Confirmation on earth. Confirmation in your soul. And as you go back home, the evidence and the witness of the Spirit of God in your heart it is done. Yeah. Well, thank you, Lord, because we know you have answered. In Jesus' name we pray. Yeah. And everybody say he has done. Say he has done all things.